or my Lutron Homos project, I rarely use Lutron occupancy sensors. Instead, I use those Faraday motion sensors. In this video, we're going to see how I use those Faraday motion sensors with Lutron Homeworks when connected to a Lutron contact closure interface and when connected at the back of a C-Touch keypad. I will then show you how I program those sensors inside the Lutron Designer software and how Homeworks is a game changer when dealing with the occupancy stages of a room. So without any further ado, <laughs> let's do it. Faraday offers a wide range of motion sensors, including this range of cool, volt-free, normally open type of sensors called Motion Sensors 360. They are to be used with control systems such as Lutron, Crashron, Control 4 and Loxon and any other that provide volt-free, dry contact input. Perfect! Here I have the Faraday Motion Sensor 360 in white. This is the one I use all the time which is also available in black. Another 360 model, which is IP67, so it can be used in outside spaces, porches, and bathrooms. As you can see, those ceiling-mounted passive infrared completely silent sensors have a very low profile, almost flushed, protruding only 3.5 mm from the ceiling. They are so discreet that they won't affect the look of a room, which is great. Faraday also provides this new 360 volt free pinhole model, even more discreet, which allows custom installers to deliver precise motion detection from a visible front that is just 15 mm in diameter. That is super tiny. It is mainly to be used for bespoke automation requirements and must be fitted in locations where the installer can access the rear of the installation surface such as wall paneling, etc., with a maximum of 5 mm thickness. In our tutorial today, I'm just going to use this regular volt-free Faraday 360. The first way I wire those Faraday motion sensors into my Lutron homework system to automatically operate the lights is by using this Lutron QSEIO contact closure interface, which has five dry contact inputs alongside five dry contact outputs. In my small demo setup here, this interface is wired back to my Homeworks processor via this Lutron cable here. Now, looking at the connector at the back of the sensor, I can see the plus in red, which, by the way, can get from 5 to 35 volt DC, which makes that sensor very versatile. The ground in black, and then the two pins here for the relay connection, to wire my motion sensor back to the Lutron interface, I'm going to use a CAT6 cable. First, I prefer to remove the connector. Then, I just need to push the cables in. And that's it! In this example, I'll use the brown for the plus, the blue for the ground, and then the orange and the green for the relay connection. Colors don't really matter here, as long as you keep the same throughout your project. If I need to remove the cable, I will use this tool here, provided for each Faraday sensor, that I will just insert behind the corresponding cable and then pull the cable out. Very simple. And when I'm done, I will just plug my connector back onto the sensor. You see, that was very easy. Now, to connect the sensor back to my Lutron interface, I will first connect the blue cable into pin 1 of the connector, which is the common, and then the brown cable into pin 2 for the 24 volt. This will power the sensor out of my Lutron communication cable or my demo setup here. Although Faraday sensors have a very low power consumption, it is recommended to power them from a separate power supply on a real Homeworks installation. Then I'll connect the orange into the input common and the green one into the contact closure input one here. Et voila! I now have my Faraday motion sensor powered and wired to my input number one on my contact closure interface. So when the sensor will detect motion, 
it will close its internal contact. This closed information will be collected by the contact closure interface and then sent back to the Lutron processor that will execute the program I've done for this specific event. Very simple. In the very same way, we can power and wire the motion sensor at the back of a C-Touch keypad, which has two contact closure inputs available. Same thing here, I'll connect the blue cable into pin 1 for the ground and the brown cable for the 24 volt. Now, when power from the back of the keypad, like we just done here, Homeworks will account two PDUs for each third-party sensor powered from the Lutron cable. So, keep an eye on your power usage, which is around 30 PDUs per processor link. Then, I connect the orange cable into the common of the contact closure connector, which is pin 5, and the green one onto contact closure number 1 on pin 7 here. Et voilà, we're done! Now, let's see how to add this Faraday's 360 motion sensor into our Lutron Homeworks database and how to program it so it can control the light in a room. In my Lutron database, let's say that I have a utility room here with a circuit of dimmable down lighters that I have to control using the Faraday motion sensor. So first, from the drop-down list here, I select Control. In my control toolbox on the top right corner, I will use the third party occupancy sensor here as I won't be using a Lutron branded sensor. If you don't have the third party sensor in your toolbox, you can add it using the edit toolbox link here. Scroll down to the wired occupancy sensor section to find it. And once selected, just click on add device and done. Now, I click on the plus sign here to add the sensor into my utility room and I can change its name to utility motion sensor for example. There we go. Back to the drop down list, this time I'll select equipment. This section is for all the Lutron backroom equipment. So here, I'll go to the room where I have my Lutron panel to add my contact closure interface. Either from this plus sign here, if you want to show the interface inside your panel, or from the toolbox if you prefer to have it on the outside. Whatever represents best your physical installation really. This won't affect how your interface will operate. For example here, I'm gonna keep it on the outside. Once added, I'll go to the input tab here to find the five inputs of my interface. In input 1, I click on the assign link here and this will bring a new window that will show all the equipment I can assign to this input. And of course, I will find my utility room motion sensor here. I will then click on the assign button to add it to my input 1. Voila! Now, my Lutron system knows where my Faraday motion sensor is connected to. Very good! If instead of the contact closure interface, I need to connect this motion sensor at the back of a C-Touch keypad, first, I'll unassign the sensor from the QSIO interface, then I'll go back to the control screen here. From here, I can add my C-Touch keypad either in the utility room if I plan to have one there. If not, I could use the nearest keypad let's say in this room here for example, if it is physically more convenient to wire the sensor back to that one. This doesn't matter, as long as Homeworks knows exactly in which room the sensor is actually fitted and to which keypad input it is physically wired back to. So, I will use that keypad and select its input tab here. In input 1, I click on the assign button to bring the same new window of available items where I will find my motion sensor. Click on the assign button next to it and I have now my occupancy sensor assigned to input 1 of my C-Touch keypad. For your information, you will also find contact closure inputs at the back of the Lutron Alice keypad, but none at the back of Palladium keypads. To illustrate the next step of this tutorial, I'm going to remove the motion sensor from the back of the keypad and keep it on the contact closure interface input 1. Now, the next step will be to assign the contact closure to one of my processor links. So back to the drop down list, I'll select link assignment and select link 1 of my processor. 
On my small demo here today, I only have a C-Touch keypad and a dimming module physically wired to that link. They've already been activated and they're ready to go. To add my contact closure interface to that link, I just check the box next to it. Okay. Now, to program my Faraday motion sensor wired back to my Lutron contact closure interface, I go to the program tab here and select occupancy. I select the utility room here, then, on the Occupy tab here, I'll program my Circuit of Dawn lighters to go full on to 100% when the room is occupied. And when I select the Unoccupy tab, Homeworks has already anticipated and automatically set the dawn lights to go off 0% when no one is in the room. Great! When it comes to timeout, which is the time between, the system no longer detects someone in the room and when it turns the lights off. The Faraday motion sensor has a fixed timeout of one second already built into the sensor itself, and I can add additional minutes to it from that list here. But in order to quickly test my programming next, I leave this at zero minutes. And that's it, I've finished programming my sensor. That was very easy. <laughs> Next, I'll have to activate my contact closure interface. So I go to the activation tab here, select devices, make sure link one, where my Lutron interface is assigned and wire two is selected. And because my computer is currently connected and online with my homeworks processor, I can click on the start activation button here. I won't transfer my database just yet. So I click on save only. Once my Lutron system is in activation mode, to activate the interface, I just need to press and hold the program button here for 6 seconds until all the LEDs start to flash quickly. OK. Back on the designer software, it will now show the interface with its serial number. And I just need to click on the activation button here. When I'm done, I just need to click on the exit activation button and save database. Good. To finish, I go to the transfer tab here and transfer the database to my homeworks processor. Okay. And now let's test the programming. There we go. <laughs> Very good. Before we go, let me show you why Lutron Homeworks is great when it comes to program occupancy. Let's say that we have an L-shaped corridor here where we want the light to be controlled via occupancy sensors. On this side here, let's say that the motion sensor is wired back to a Lutron QSCIO contact closure interface on input 1. On the other side, we have another occupancy sensor, this time wired back to the nearest C-Touch keypad, in this room here, for example. So, back in my database, I'm going to add those two third-party occupancy sensors as I will be using the Faraday motion sensors instead of the Lutron ones. I'm going to assign occupancy sensor number two to the C-Touch keypad it is wired back to. Here. And then go to the equipment screen and assign occupancy sensor number one to my QSEIO input one. Now, check this out. I go to the program screen and select occupancy from the drop-down list. Then, go to the Occupy tab here, same as we've done before, and program the light levels when someone walks into the room. And on the Unoccupy tab, I make sure the lights will turn off when no one is in the corridor. Good. I'm also going to add a timeout I want to apply to those sensors. 
and that's it. <laughs> Hopefully, you just noticed that I didn't have to program each motion sensor individually. With Homeworks, you can add as much occupancy sensors as you want in a room. You only need to program what you need when the room is occupied and unoccupied, nothing else. The system will monitor the status of each occupancy sensor for us and do all the logic behind the scene automatically to make sure the lights stay on, as long as people are still being detected by at least one motion sensor in that room, which save a great amount of time and avoid any sort of programming issues. That is very cool. Voila, there you have it. How to use Faradite Motion 360 sensors with Lutron Homewares. I hope you find this video useful. And if you have any question on Faradite motion sensors, or on occupancy programming in Lutron Homeworks, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to know how I design a full Lutron Homework system, you can click on that video link here. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Adelux YouTube channel so you can be updated when the next video is released. Thank you very much. Good luck and talk to you again on the next tutorial. <laughs>